Sabrina 90's comic, issue 25. We start out with Sabrina taking Esmeralda to the springtime opening of a theme park, hoping that she'll behave. Oh, it's by Mike Gallagher, awesome. Finally, I thought every issue would be by him. Esmeralda's disappointed when she's told in a whisper not to do magic, which you should know that by behave, that's always part of what Sabrina meant. Esmeralda wants to go to Six Flags' brain bender, and Sabrina immediately decides to go to the haunted house instead, probably assuming that her kid cousin wouldn't be able to handle a roller coaster. Esmeralda thinks that the mortal depiction of the haunted house would probably be insulting. Sabrina tells her not to be so sensitive, and chooses teleportation and cut to the front of the line, which gets everyone complaining. And only after Sabrina uses magic to go back do people notice that this is magical. Before, people just complained about them cutting a line, as if they didn't see witches teleporting to it. This kind of thing wouldn't be confusing if it was established that all the mortals know about witches and are used to them. It's nice that one of the mortals says cool instead of being freaked out at all. And another mortal is dumb enough to think it's just a special effect done with lasers. That's ridiculous. I guess the spy witch brainwashed him into it. He must have been right there to do it right on time. Sabrina says that they're gonna wait in line like everyone else. I wish she explained to her that it's because it's not fair to everyone else to cut in front of them. Because that'd make it easier for her to understand. Esmeralda's bored by the haunted house, immediately calling the so-called ghosts big screen projections, and then decides to use magic to make the boneyard actually scary, scaring mortals with monsters. The spy witches are gonna have a field day erasing all these memories. Sabrina tells Esmeralda, who wants to add a swarm of locusts, that either she cuts it out or they're leaving. And fortunately, she complies and Sabrina undoes the scene at the graveyard. It's pretty pathetic that they can't use Mickey Mouse. So is the Six Flags or Disneyland? Why is Sabrina reacting to what's clearly people wearing costumes like they're the actual characters? And Esmeralda had no reason to zap up some scary, oversized animals. She uses magic to get rid of them on her, and because people saw that, Sabrina makes her voice sound like a PA system and says that for more amazing holograms, they should visit their Futurama area. It's so weird, the comic can say Futurama all at once, but not Mickey Mouse. It is an 90s comic, so I wouldn't be too surprised if this was before Futurama came out. The guard wonders if the line just shrunk as Esmeralda goes up the stairs with Sabrina. Esmeralda says that it loops and swirls and goes inside a mountain, and calls it the best ride she ever invented. Sabrina corrects her, and she responds with dismissal and goes into the lead car. There's also an Archie comedy page. Betty picks out a dress, and Veronica chooses the other one. She's unlikable here. I had a friend like that in school. I know how Betty feels. While Sabrina has fun on the roller coaster, Esmeralda's bored and uses magic to make the cars fall through the Earth's crust and teleport to the Arctic wilderness, with Sabrina thinking this is all part of the ride. Then the train gets encased in a giant air bubble, and fortunately Sabrina finally gets suspicious, snarking, You know, I'm starting to think this is a little beyond what they can produce, Esmeralda. The bubble rises fast, and they pop up in New York Harbor, flying between the World Trade Centers and up in the stratosphere. She takes them back as Sabrina's mad at her and wants to leave. Then the story ends with the people who witnessed magic complimenting the employee for what they saw, and fortunately the writer was smart enough to have a character say that she never did find the holograms in Futurama. In the next story, Salem's being chased by a dog and runs up a tree while saying that he still has some magical abilities for emergency use only. How does that make sense? His collar gets caught in a branch and busts, causing him to fall and land on his feet. And his collar landed in the bushes. He gets chased by the dog again. An animal control officer captures Salem in a net along with the dog. Realistically, he tells the owner of the dog over the phone to tie him up from now on so that this won't happen again. But cats without collars have to stay in the shelter. Salem clears his owl right in front of him, and he doesn't even react. Why are the dogs speaking English and taunting him about being new? I guess they're all transformed witches, all at the same time. Real cats and dogs aren't smart enough to have their own language, the only they can say. Salem then uses magic to bring a telephone over him to call Sabrina with. While it makes no sense that Enchantu would let him keep any of his magical powers and will severely diminish how much of a punishment his transformation is, 
It's still ultimately worth it to see more magic being used. Then after Sabrina goes to get him, with the story mercifully cutting past Salem talking to Sabrina, she says that she's tired of Salem and the dog always fighting, and Salem somehow convinces her not to have a talk with Mr. Johnson about it, saying that he realizes he shouldn't sweat the small stuff, as he turns the dog into a ladybug, which would have consequences. Not that we're shown that. Then the next story, it's been so long since I've seen Amy that I'm actually glad to see her again. She has a really generic design, looking just like any other teenage girl, but I kind of like that because at least it means that she's being treated like she doesn't really matter that much. While Jem in the animated series gets this kind of preferential treatment by getting a more memorable design with her hairstyle, as if she's actually an impressive character and not just another cliche mean girl. But Amy gets a bit of punishment because, no, she's not really that special. She asked Sabrina if she's training for an eventual career as a house painter, which was apparently supposed to be a mean joke. Sabrina says that Amy knows she's finishing the decorations for tonight's magical dinner. Amy says that she doesn't know why Sabrina was put in charge, and Sabrina says that her taking hours to do this is Amy and her friends' fault for not helping out. Then Amy gets startled by what's actually a Harvey wearing a medieval outfit, not a person from the medieval ages that Sabrina summoned. That would have been less confusing if it was a live action show. Harvey, despite normally being a nice guy, doesn't apologize to Amy for startling her for some reason, when usually he's too nice to her, and instead says that he'll be narrating the evening's festivities. Amy says that there will be laughing stocks when the magical dinner flops. Harvey stands up for Sabrina, saying that she's worked hard on the project, and Sabrina accuses Amy of being jealous of desperation. Amy says that if the dinner succeeds, she'll do a chore for her, and Sabrina takes her at her word because she's desperate to believe her. She could so easily not do the chore. Harvey offers to buy Sabrina a soda on the way home, and Sabrina thanks him and says she's gotta clean up and check the band, and says she'll see him tonight. I'm glad there hasn't been a ton of focus on relationship drama in this comic. I always assumed that she'd keep getting infatuated with the random guy of the week and trying to win him over, but that was way more rare than I expected, and even her dating Harvey is not made too big a deal out of, and instead the focus is always on magic, as it should be because that's what makes a series unique and fun, while tons of series have shipping. I'm glad she mostly sticks with Harvey instead of constantly going after other guys with the same exact personality anyways. We got to later, where Sabrina says she's proud of herself for guiding the entire magical dinner without using her magic, including picking a renaissance group. She checks on them by going to their house, and they reveal that they've formed a punk rock band because they don't think they're gonna get famous playing chamber music. Unnecessarily, Sabrina says their music is terrible as their lyrics are too repetitive. It's clear that the writer is biased against punk rock music and hasn't heard enough good songs from the genre, which led to a mean-spirited joke. It could have easily been respectful. Sadly, we don't get to actually see Sabrina fire the band that inexplicably decides to do this and miss out on getting paid by her. Zelda back at home remembers loving Renaissance music, and Salem suggests bringing that band to the present to play at Sabrina's dinner. Zelda and Hilda are fine with this. I guess it's not legal to do it because the band would be too obscure for its members to be historical figures, and they're not time-traveling themselves. Sabrina says that she was doing this all without magic, and her aunts bring the band over to her anyways, and Sabrina's cheered up and agrees anyways. And the story ends with Amy getting dunked in the water, with the funds for it every time getting donated to the funds for the next year's magical dinner. And Amy says she'll get Sabrina for this, realistically. I'm pleasantly surprised that the characters using magic didn't get them punished. This issue was by Mikey Gallagher from the Sonic comic, and he fit right in. The first story is about Esmeralda causing trouble with her magic at Disney World out of boredom in a variety of ways. And what made the story interesting was waiting to see what would happen next. I wish it was explained that the reason Sabrina had the dumb idea to take her there, and keep her there for so long, was that she really wanted to experience the whole theme park and have her have fun the mortal way, and was too stubborn to give up right away. But I guess we're supposed to assume that. The second story was about Salem losing his collar to a tree branch and getting captured by animal control, because once again he was inexplicably out of the house, just to suddenly reveal he still has the magical power of telekinesis, so he brings a phone to him to call Sabrina. I can't imagine why a person who turned him into a cat would ever let him keep his powers, but at least it was new and interesting to see him use magic. For the most part though, it was just a generic story that's probably been done tons of times, but with the twist that there's some spells in it. 
The third story is about Sabrina getting a medieval band to play at her school, courtesy of her aunts, after her original band inexplicably changes genres in front of her and she has to fire them. And it was cathartic that Amy got dumped in the water for mistreating Sabrina the whole story. It was smart of Sabrina to agree to the band playing when she wanted to do things the mortal way the whole time. That was impressive. I'm forced to assume that the band members were all too polite and smart to comment on how things are different in modern times and get in trouble. Like commenting on how much more skin the women show with their clothes. I guess Sabrina and her aunts told them to keep quiet about their comments. 